This is Join Us in France, episode 263. Bonjour, I'm Annie Sargent, and Join Us in France is a podcast where you'll hear pragmatic advice for your next trip to France. On today's episode, as Christmas 2019 is just a few days away, I talk to Amanda Brinkerhoff about her visit to Christmas markets of northern France and Belgium. She definitely has her favorites, and she explains why. Christmas Markets are not all created equal, and some things about them are a little bit off putting to tell you the truth, so stay tuned, we'll help you choose the best. If you're interested in this episode, I recommend you also check out joinusinfrance.com, then click on the interest menu item, and then Christmas in France at the very bottom. Show notes for this episode are on joinusinfrance.com forward slash 263. That's the numbers, 263. Bonjour, Amanda, and welcome to join us in France. Bonjour, Annie. How nice to talk to you about your very recent visit to Christmas markets of northern France and Belgium. Yes, it was just a just over a week ago, so yeah. very recent. <laughs> very recent. So we're talking in December 2019 for people who are going to be listening to this a long time from now, <laughs> which happens with podcasts. So what was the what was the gist of your trip? Was there a specific purpose to this or you just wanted to go see Christmas markets? We did want to go see the Christmas markets. We love this time of year in Europe, and but we also love France, and we hadn't really explored the northern part of the country, so we wanted to combine the two. Yeah, cool. And, and so you had been to France before? Yes, I've been several times, mainly in Paris, but also a little bit to the south and western parts of the country. Oh, very good. So do you speak the language? A very little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel that People was a are problem? Very kind. Yeah. Did you feel that was a problem not having much language? No, not at all. Um, you know, when I would speak the very little bit I could, people would, you know, just smile or giggle and, you know, then help me out. So that's great. Very kind. That's wonderful. All right. So, what did you do on this wonderful trip? And how long was your trip, by the way? So, our trip was about a week. So, we arrived um, on a Sunday and flew back out on a Sunday. So, um, we spent that entire week in either France or a couple of days up in Belgium. Uh huh. So we started out with Amiens and spent a few days there and before we moved into Lille and then up into Belgium in Ghent for a few days. And then we finished our trip in Reims. Oh, very nice. Okay. So you flew in and out of uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport, CDG. We did. Okay. We did. Excellent. All right. And then you drove? We did. Um, I've driven in France before, and we wanted the flexibility to be able to go where we wanted or spend as much time as we wanted in a given place. Um, so we decided that driving was going to be the best option. That ended up being a good idea because the transportation strike happened while we were there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did it? Was it a big problem at the airport or not so much? Um, yes, it was. Just mainly for the passport control leaving back leaving the country, ah. the lines were like two and a half to three hours long for oh. people to get through. Oh. So, oh. plan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that that just that is awful. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we we actually got through pretty quick because my stepfather. I was with my parents, and he had a little bit of a leg injury and was using a cane. And so they kind of pulled us out of line and sped us through. Oh, that's yeah. I'm sorry about the cane, but that's, that's good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's handy dandy. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So you went to, so you arrive at CDG, you picked up a car at the airport and then you drove to Amiens. Correct. On our way to Amiens, we decided to, we really love French Gothic cathedrals. So along the way, we decided to make a little stop, even though it's only an hour and a half drive, 
Um, we felt like we wanted to get out and walk around, stretch our legs a little bit after we'd been on a plane all night. Sure. Um, so we stopped in Beauvais on our way and we were a little surprised because being a Sunday, we thought around the cathedral, it would be a little busy. It was very quiet. Uh-huh. Um, not many people in Beauvais. It's a smaller town, Yeah. Uh, but it was very quiet and it almost looked like the cathedral was closed up and not open. So we walked around the cathedral, um, saw the outside, saw a little bit of the town, and then decided to get back in the car and head out. We wish we had kind of tried the front door because apparently it was open. Ah. Uh, well, <laughs> so you, always try the door. Yeah, open, especially the front door. Like, <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, rookie mistake. <laughs> Yeah, it's true that cathedrals are very large and sometimes, well, actually all the time, you don't really know which way to enter. Some churches will want you to enter through the the, the big uh, portico in the front and others don't discourage that. They want you to go in through the sides. You never know. It's kind of up to the church to decide what they want to know. So you do have to walk all the way around. You do. Mm -hmm. um, and Beauvais is the largest of the French Gothic cathedrals, or the tallest, it claims. Right. So there apparently is a little bit of competition with Amiens, who claims to be the largest or tallest, <laughs> because it's complete and Beauvais was not. So. Aha. There you have it. Take that, Beauvais. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so a little town. You said you mentioned in your show notes that I mean in your guest notes that most restaurants were closed. Yeah, there we did we did end up seeing one restaurant that looked to be open, um, but the others right there by the cathedral were closed. Right. This is something that's so important for people to understand is that on a Sunday in a minor French town, people are home. They don't go out like they will. I mean, they if they are church attending people, they'll go to church, but then they'll go home for Sunday lunch. A lot of uh, French people go running on Sunday mornings. They go riding their bikes, whatever, but they're not out and about the town. So these towns, the, the, the minor towns are going to in the winter, they're going to seem a little bit dead. Right. So and, and then Mondays also, you know. Yeah. In, with, as we get into the next day a little bit, we'll find that, you know, again, a lot of things are closed because being a Monday tends right. to happen a lot, especially in the smaller towns. So right. those two days, we really just kind of took a little bit of a relaxed day and, you know, just kind of spent our time wandering exteriors and, you know, through the town, looking at the architecture and things like that. So how many of, of you were there on this trip? There were just three of us, me, myself, and then my parents. Mm -hmm. um, and so... It was, you know, and they're a little bit older, so it was, you know, we yeah. do tend to slow down a little bit anyway. Yeah. Um, and so it was really nice and relaxed and not rushed to see everything. Very nice. So that was nice. And then I assume you continued on to Amiens? We did continue on to Amiens. Um, another tip I will tell you is weekends during towns with large Christmas markets are very crowded. And parking can be a challenge. <laughs> that's spent, why Beauvais was empty, because everybody was in Amiens. <laughs> that's right. Um, being, it was, I think, somewhere between an hour to 45 minutes, I think, between the two. And it's it was a very different atmosphere in Amiens. It was very crowded, lots of cars. It took us probably over an hour to end up finding parking. Mm. Um, but eventually we did find some parking, and that was... Um, Near to the hotel that we stayed in, another thing is a lot of the hotels don't have parking because they're in small buildings in the old town. Um, so we did, ahead of the trip, I went into Google Maps, and for all of the towns we were going to be staying in or visiting, I Googled parking in those areas yep. and pinned parking locations near the things we wanted to see oh. so that we knew exactly where we were going to go and we could just put that into the GPS and just drive straight to the parking structure. So that was very really nice. helpful. Yeah, very nice. So which you brought your own, like, was it a standalone GPS or was this a f GPS with your phone? I used my phone. Okay. So you got data. I did. Okay. I, I usually will pay for data while I'm there, um, but I'm the only one. Usually whoever's with me doesn't, and at least one of us will have GPS or yeah. Yeah. data. Yeah. And people sometimes say, oh, it's best if everybody in the family has data. But that's not quite true, because even if you split up, 
sending a text message is very cheap and it'll work even if you don't have data. Um, at least, I mean, I haven't tested it with every phone I've ever come across, but all the ones I've seen, it will at least send a text message and then, you know, and it's cheap. So that's a way to communicate even if you don't have data. Correct. Because it's not like AT&T or Verizon or whatever doesn't work in France. It will work, but it will roam. (laughs) So it'll cost you an arm and a leg other than for text messages. So, yeah. so that's what we tend to use or the free Wi-Fi in our hotels or the restaurants. So a lot of times we can pick up on that free Wi-Fi to yeah. send messages if we need to. Right. So so th- this, so you saw the Amiens Christmas market on a Sunday, which is very busy. It's the day of the week when people go. To- it is. We didn't spend a whole lot of time in the market that day because it was, we were a little tired. And I bet. <laughs> it was very busy. And so we we did go into the market, wander around a little bit, got some dinner from the market. Um, but we actually ended up exploring the market a couple of days later um, when it wasn't quite as crowded right. as well. So Right. So what sorts of items? I mean, obviously food. You just mentioned that you had your dinner there. Um, what sorts of items did you find at the Christmas market in Amiens? So in Amiens, I think we... We shopped and we found things like being our first time in the, um, that part of the country, we didn't quite know what the weather would be. We knew it would be a little bit cold and we brought our coats, um, but we ended up buying scarves and hats yeah. in the market <laughs> because it was colder and windier than we had thought it was going to be. So we ended up doing that. Um, and then also just um, we found some local specialties, uh, macaron de Amiens, which mm. is, I guess, a cookie that's made just there in the city huh. um and so we found that in the market as well and it's almost like a coconut macaroon that you would see here in the u.s yeah but it's made with apple instead oh so quite tasty that sounds good we brought some of those home for treats for you know co-workers and stuff and they all quite enjoyed it and they and they keep well they did they were like individually wrapped uh-huh. um and they did keep they did keep pretty well. Cool. And do, so do they put them in pretty boxes like they do with the, uh, the macaron? Um, it was it was just in like a cellophane wrapper with a bow. Um, so oh, okay, so they're not super fragile. No, okay. no, not at all. Okay, cool. I don't think I've ever had those. Sounds good. Yeah. And so that was pretty much what we found. Um, Amion is not an overly large Christmas market. It's in a, quite spread out. Um, a lot of food. And then... Just your standard, you know, scarves, hats, leather goods. Yeah. Um, that Christmas type ornaments, of, maybe? A, a few Christmas ornaments. Not a lot of Christmas ornaments, but yeah. some. Yeah. See, French people... Okay, so I do a style of Christmas tree where I mix ornaments. So whenever I go somewhere and I like an ornament, I will buy it. And so my tree ends up looking like all sorts of colors and shapes and sizes. But most French people don't do that. They want like they want this year they want the the purple Christmas tree or they want the red Christmas tree or whatever. And so they buy ornaments of that color. Right. Right. And so it's so, so they don't tend to buy they don't tend to collect Christmas ornaments the way Americans do. Yeah. And it's definitely a difference of what we saw in the markets in France versus what we were used to in say Germany or Austria. Um but, you yeah. know, you could tell there's a difference in what they're used to. The markets, are, I think, are a little bit newer in France, kind of the still growing and expanding into having the same types of things that we see in the other markets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll come back to the Christmas market in Amiens because you explored it some more uh, on the third day. But on the second day, you went and explored... Uh, places that have to do with World War One, I'm assuming? Yes. Um, so we took a drive out towards the coast. Our intent was to try and get to Calais and Dunkirk. We didn't quite make it um, because the days are shorter and we didn't want to be driving in the dark. Mm. Um, but we we stopped first in St. Valerie sur Somme, um, which is a medieval town right there as the Somme empties out into the sea, the bay there. A cute medieval little town. More touristy, I'm going to guess, in the summer months um, when it's warmer and it's out there on the coast. Yeah. Um, 
closed up this time of year, but we did enjoy just walking around and looking at the medieval town and walking along the boardwalk of the river. Okay. And then we headed up the coast, um, heading towards Calais. Um, as I said, didn't make it, but we um, came across a World War I military cemetery oh. um, at, I'm probably going to butcher this, but Etapla. You did not butcher this. Etapla. <laughs> very well. Very good. Um, and it's a pretty large military cemetery. It has over 11,000 um, graves. Um, so quite moving. Um, reminded me a lot of the ones, the military cemeteries in Normandy, but just, you know, very somber, you know, to kind of drive past and kind of see this huge field with just those headstones um, and some beautiful memorials there. Yeah. And it looks like it's mostly British soldiers. It was. It's a British Commonwealth Cemetery. Mm. Um, so after we um, stopped there and um, wandered that a little bit, um, it was getting a little bit later in the day because we'd been driving some of the smaller um roads that go through the small towns mm -hmm. um, so it was a little bit slower driving um, we decided we wanted to start heading back to Amiens because we knew there was a stop along the way we wanted to make for um, a Christmas market in Arras ah, um, yes. which ended up being a small town um, but the Christmas market was very festive we really enjoyed Arras um, it was probably one of the highlights of our trip mm -hmm. um, it's probably about 50 or 60 booths um, in the market, a little bit of mix of food as well as, you know, the standard things of, you know, the hats, scarves, but we found a few um, different things there. I believe it was in a Ross. I bought a little stuffed kitten that had been hand stitched mm. um, for my, for my niece as a Christmas present. <laughs> um, and then um, they just had some beautiful light displays in town as well. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, like little scenes with Santa Claus and reindeers. Um, so it was a lot of fun to just wander around and, and experience getting the Christmas spirit there in Arras. That's cool. Yeah, Arras has a great reputation as a very pretty town. Yeah, it's a different architecture than what, you know, you're used to seeing in other parts of France because you're starting to head north more into that, you know, Belgian and Flemish architecture. And yeah. so it's really pretty. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's cool. And 50 booths is quite a bit, actually. I mean, you know, Toulouse is a much bigger city, and I don't think we have 50 booths at our Christmas market. So, <laughs> yeah. But in the south of France, we don't have that. Like in the southwest, we don't really have the tradition of Christmas markets. We have it even less than they do uh, in Arras, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was one that we had read and it had been highly recommended in some of the research I had done ahead of the trip. So um, it didn't disappoint. We quite enjoyed that one. That's cool. Oh, and you mentioned that it didn't have a lot of mass market items. No, it was a lot more. It seemed like it was a lot more local handmade items rather than the mass market. So yeah. I think that's that's one of the differences when we're looking at the markets and what we really enjoy is finding more unique items that yeah. are you know local or handmade yeah i wish christmas markets were more like a an etsy kind of marketplace you right. know where you can find but the 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 thing is they they rent those spaces because most of these places will put together uh little i don't want to call them huts they're not huts but little cottages maybe you'd call them uh, and they rent them to each vendor and it ends up costing thousands of euros to rent one of those and if you're just selling something you know this one item on etsy i guess you can't afford five thousand bucks for the you know right. for, for the rental so yeah it's it's too bad i i hope that they find a way to include more of these handmade crafty things. Cause the first few years we had a Christmas market in Toulouse, it was all these, you know, these little cars, these little um, boys were crazy about those. They were little uh, 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 guided like cars that you could make them, you could hit them against walls and they'd come apart and then you put them back together and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it was all stuff made in China, you know, it was all. Yes. So. <clears throat> yeah. And that's what, you know, we do tend to see. I think the bigger cities, you tend to see that a lot more, the mass market stuff. Cause yeah. They can afford to pay the money for those booths. 
wherein I think the smaller towns like Arras probably are more local people doing it. And so maybe explore the smaller town markets um, and look for those instead. That's a good point. That's a good point. Because like uh, (laughs) one year it was like, it seemed to me like at least five or six were selling these, you know, these fidget spinner thingies that were popular a year or two ago. (laughs) Yes. We we really didn't need that many people selling that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> there there always seems to be the, you know, toy of the year yeah. that, you know, everybody is selling in their booth. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, everybody sells the mulled wine. That's one thing I, I yes. noticed in Toulouse this year is, like, they sell scarves and mulled wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we're not big wine drinkers. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not really a fan of the mold wine, mm-hmm. um, particularly. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we tend to like, there's usually a non-alcoholic version that's more like an apple cider. Um, and what we ended up finding in Amiens that we cr- really enjoyed was pear. It was like more like a pear cider or pear juice. Oh, nice. Um, that was hot. And that was our favorite drink I think we found on the entire trip. That's cool. Other than the hot chocolate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, chocolate, the... Uh... The and they sell all the food stuff. So you, I'm assuming that they have regional food stuff up there because in the south they certainly sell regional food things. They do. There is a lot of re- more regional food, though you do start to see a lot of the same stuff as well. Um, I think some of the big things we saw this year across the various markets was um, the racklet sandwiches, so the hot cheese that's scraped onto the bread. Yeah, um, that was a popular one. Yeah. And cheese and bread's always a favorite for me. <laughs> um, and then um, there was also a mix of where there, it's like a mix of like meat and onion and cheese sandwiches, things like that. So, yeah, yeah. you know, a little bit different than what we've seen in other countries like Germany, where it's always sausages. It tended to be more cheese and um, kind of ham focused as all the markets we saw in France. Mm, cool. All right. So you, the next day you spent the day in Amiens again. We did. So that's the day we really explored Amiens a little bit more. Um, so we wandered through. Um, there's a district that they call the Saint Saint Lou district. Uh, that's uh, kind of where their canals are, and it used to be the mills um, and homes of the weavers and dyers of the city. Oh. Um, and so they've now renovated that whole area, and they're very colorful, colorful um, houses. Um, and lots of canals and bridges. So a fun area to just wander around. There's a little bit of street art over there that you can come across. Hmm. So just a fun um, area to explore for the day. And then um, our, one of our main focuses in Amiens was to visit the cathedral. Um, so we did visit um, that um, earlier in the day um, before it got too crowded. Um, and wandered around the cathedral. It's beautiful. As I said, it's one of the tallest. So um, you just walk in and you're just really impressed with the size yeah. of how you know big that they were able to build these cathedrals. Um, so and so, cool. yeah, they, they do taking... have tours. Yeah, they have tours of the towers that you can go up and the treasury. Um, but they're at set times, so it wasn't when we happened to be there. But that's something that you can explore as well. Mm. Yeah. And then at night, they have a light show. So during the Christmas market time in December, um, they do a light and sound show on the facade of the cathedral. Oh, how fun. Um, and so at 7 o'clock each night during the Christmas market, you can go um, in front of the cathedral and watch that. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful how they time the lights to the different music, um, you know, across the cathedral area, you know, at one point it looked like little balls were kind of filling up the cathedral and then, you know, they kind of spilled across. It was just beautiful. Mm, very nice. That sounds good. I wish they did that, that in Toulouse. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's pretty much what all we did. And then wandering through the Christmas market there in Amiens, like I said, it's kind of spread out um, and a lot of mass market stuff there in Amiens. Mm-hmm. Um, but we still enjoyed the festive spirit of everybody wandering around and, you know, being all bundled up, drinking their hot drinks. So Yeah. And so you, um, in Amiens, you stayed at a chambre d'hôte. Or was it a hotel? We, it was a chambre d'hôte. It was a house where they converted a part of their rooms into hotel rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, 
probably about only five or six rooms in the place. Hmm. And then, but then they had free breakfast in the morning. So it was really nice. We ended up having like a little two bedroom suite for us. So we had our own bathroom and two bedrooms. So we each kind of had our own space. So cool. Um, that worked out really nice. A little bit of a language barrier. That was probably the one time where we had a little bit of a language barrier just because our host didn't speak quite as much English. So we did have to break out the Google Translate once or twice. Okay. Well, that's all right. Yeah. You managed to figure out what was wrong? <laughs> we did. Okay. We, I think we were talking about some of the areas we had been exploring yeah. the day before. And as we were trying to explain where we had been or what we were looking for, um, there was a little bit of a language barrier. Yeah, so. yeah. So you also recommend a pizza place that I'll put in the show notes and you went shopping. Oh, you went shopping for chocolate at a place yes. called Jean Tronieu. Right. And that's where we found some of the Macron d'Amiens cookies. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so they have them there at that shop. And there's a couple of shops in town from that company. And it happens to be the family of the French first lady. So... Ah, yes, the Brigitte Macron, shops. yes, yes, Emmanuel Macron and Brigitte Macron are from Amiens. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Celebrity Macron. <laughs> 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 All right, so the next day you moved on to Lille. Yes, so Lille, we heard a lot of good things about the Christmas market. It's a larger town, and so we decided to head there and spend one night as we were heading into Belgium. Along the way, we did take a little bit of a detour to explore some more of the World War I memorials and cemeteries. We came across one called Loc Tregnor, or Loc Loc Nagar. Loc Nagar. And it was a mine. Um, It had been an area where they had been, there had been a lot of trenches during World War I. And we didn't realize this. This was something we learned. Um, Apparently, they used to tunnel under the trenches. And then they would put explosives to blow up the opposition's trenches. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a crater that had been created by one of those explosions mm. um, with a little memorial there and talking about the history of, of how that all happened. So mm. um, that was an interesting find that we found on our way to Lille. Yeah, yeah, that that's sobering that they would do that to one another. Oy. Yeah, it was. Um, and then in Lille, we, again, pretty much in Lille, we focused on the Christmas market we found a hotel that was right on the Grand Place, uh, mm. where the big Ferris wheel is. So Lil has one of the really large Ferris wheels as part of its Christmas market. And then they have the selection of booths and, you know, you know pretty much the standard things, Some mainly the same things we had seen in Amiens the previous day. So yep. not a lot of unique there in Lil. Um, but again, really enjoying the architecture more of the city and just wandering around the old town and looking at some of that French Flemish architecture. Cool. Right. So this one, so I'll put your hotel recommendation. You also recommend uh, a restaurant. Uh, you say it caters to tourists, but it's good food. That's always good to know. <laughs> and, oh, and you went shopping at a patisserie. Yes. A lot of our shopping was focused on chocolates and desserts because we quite <laughs> enjoy those. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we did find a patisserie that had really delicious, a religious, I I'm, don't know how to say this right, a religious? Une religieuse. 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 Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's a standard um, French patisserie. Dessert. Yeah, dessert. Yeah, a choux pastry with the most amazing salted caramel mm. pastry cream inside. So Sounds good. We, nice afternoon snack. Yeah. So if you could only see one Christmas market between Lille and Arras or Amiens, which one would you go to? I would say Arras. Arras, I think okay. that was the one we had, we enjoyed the most. Um, a small town, so not as crowded as the other two. And like I said, a lot more of handmade local items that appeared. So Very good to know. Okay. And then you moved on to Belgium. We did. We spent two days in Belgium. On our way in, we um, drove to Bruges, yeah. um, which is a cute medieval town. So a lot of the architecture is, you know, towers and turrets and very much looks like a little castle town yeah. uh, that we really enjoyed walking through. They have a lot of shopping streets, a lot of chocolate shops. 
in town, also known for its um, lace making. Um, so there's a lot of lace shops as well. We wandered through there. They had they had two Christmas markets in Bruges, hmm. um, a small one with only maybe 20 or so little booths, huts, and then a larger one. Um, we actually enjoyed the little smaller one a lot more. I think, again, because it had that smaller feel and seemed to be more unique items versus the larger mass market right. items in the larger Right, so you, you give me the name of both. I, I, I might not say them right. Simon Steviplin? Anyway, I'll put it in the show notes because <laughs> I'm okay. not sure how to say that. But the one you enjoyed most was the smaller one, the Simon one. We did. And then we really just wandered, enjoyed wandering around town. Um, one of the things that we visited there was the Basilica of the Holy Blood, um, which is just a small chapel that was part of the palace um, there in that town. Reminded me a lot of um, Saint-Chapelle in Paris, where mm. it's just kind of that smaller, more intimate um, chapel. And it's known for it, its relic, which is supposedly a piece of cloth with the blood of Jesus on it. And during certain parts of the day, you can go up to the altar and actually touch the vial that has this piece of cloth in it. Mm. Um, and so we happened to be there as that was happening that day. Huh. Did you get healed? <laughs> you know, we didn't actually touch it because we were like, we didn't know what was really going on. And then we kind of realized afterwards, you know, as yeah. they were taking it away, it's like, <laughs> oh, that's what that was. Yeah, you're more likely to get sick if you touch something that dozens of other people have touched. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> That's modern science. <laughs> <laughs> so we really enjoyed Bruges. Um, it does cater to tourists. So, you know, very clean. I would say that's probably of all the towns we visited where we heard the most English speaking happening. Oh, yeah. Um, all of the other towns are not really well known for American or English tourists as much, I don't think. So right, right. we've we felt a lot of the times like we were the only Americans around. So. Right, right. So there was this Bruges movie years ago. I, I, don't, I don't know why people liked it so much, but I think it sent, uh, it gave a lot of people the idea that they needed to go visit Bruges, which is a nice yeah. place. I, I've been to. It is. It's a nice place, yeah. We, we, we enjoyed it. Definitely someplace I'll go back again someday when I have a little bit more time to wander mm -hmm. around. And, so did you and sleep in Bruges? We didn't. Um, that was just a stop on our way to um, Belgium. Okay. So we actually, after we left Bruges, we drove into Ghent to check into our hotel. And then the next day we explored Ghent. It's very similar to Bruges, but maybe not as... It's not as touristy, mm -hmm. though. So very similar architecture and style, just... You know, not yet. It's trying to become Bruges, but not quite there yet. So a little <laughs> the redheaded stepchild or something. So, uh, <laughs> But it has a lot of famous sites. And so we wandered those the next day. So it's got its big cathedral, St. Bavo's Cathedral, which is the home of the Ghent altarpiece, which is one of the famous European artworks. Yes. Um, well known because it was stolen I think a couple of different times, mm -hmm. um, one of them being during World War II. Um, it was one of the paintings that was hidden in the salt mines um, by the Nazis. And, you know, part of the movie, The Monuments Men, ah, where yes. they, some of the Americans, you know, saved these artworks from the Germans. Um, yeah. This was one of those art pieces. So, so how is um, it displayed? So um, it has its own separate room in the cathedral. And they're actually working on a permanent exhibition, I think, separate outside of the cathedral that's supposed to open next year in 2020. But they've kind of got it right now in its own separate area. You have to pay an extra fee. There is no fee to get into the cathedral, but there is a fee to go in to see the altarpiece. Right. Um, I think it was about four euros per person. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it comes with a free audio guide that gives you some historical information and context of each of the panels of the altarpiece and kind of walks you through the whole thing. So that was really nice. We enjoyed that. It was probably maybe about a half hour long to get through the audio guide. And they've got it set up. And at certain parts of the day, they'll actually close because it's got side panels that close. Um, and then there's paintings that would be on that front um, close piece as well. So every now and then during the day, they'll close it so you can see the, the front as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would love to see that. I've been to Ghent, yeah. but I didn't 
I, 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 I didn't go in and I yeah. think you need to. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. it was, um, I love, you know, seeing some of those famous pieces of art. And so that was definitely a highlight for me. Yeah. And then. Can you take pictures? Other... No, you can't take pictures of the, of the painting itself. So we went to the bookshop right there in the cathedral after and bought postcards. Yeah. Yep. And then one of the other big things that we saw in Ghent was um, the Castle of the Counts. Um, it's called Gravenstein, which was the home of the Counts of Flanders, or one of the homes of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's a, it's a fortified medieval fortress um, <laughs> that still has its moat and ramparts, and you can take tours of that as well. Nice. And that was worth and then, seeing, in your opinion? Um, it was. It's, you know very much exactly what you would think a medieval fortress should look like. Yeah. Cool. (laughs) And then, um, and then the rest of the day we spent in the Christmas market. So a fairly large Christmas market there in Ghent, but not being as big of a touristy city, it ended up being one we really enjoyed. Again, some things that we hadn't seen in other markets, um, more handmade items. And then the other thing we really enjoyed there was stopping at the different chocolate booths and buying and trying and tasting the different chocolates so Mm -hmm. (laughs) you were in belgium after all (laughs) we were so best place to buy it you know we found some handmade ornaments there in that uh, market little bells that you know ceramic bells that had been painted things like that so uh, those were some of the things that we bought there in ghent Mm. so you you wrote that you try the both kinds of belgian waffles to decide which yes. one was your favorite. So which one was your favorite? Um, I preferred the Liege. Liege, waffle. yeah. Liege. Um, it's, it's more like a bread dough that they cook into a waffle. Okay. Um, but it has more sugar content in it, so probably why I enjoy it more. <laughs> um, but just nice and soft and chewy. And then they had me- melted chocolate that they had poured on it. So mm. kind of a <laughs> double... I Double think that's lamby. the only kind I know. What's the other kind? There's also a, I think it's a Brussels waffle. Okay. Um, and it's kind of a crispier waffle rather than the chewier. Um, oh, I, I see what you mean now. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, I know what you mean now. It is crispier. It's thinner and crispier. Yes. Yes, yes. So, so try both, but. My preference is the Liege. Yes, Liege has like these chunks of sugar inside, crystallized. Yes, crystallized, crystal. I can't say it. <laughs> Bits of sugar inside. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was pretty much our trip in Belgium. Would definitely recommend it. It's beautiful and someplace I'll go back to. Um, we did have a couple of um, meals there that we really enjoyed, and one that I'll really uh, that I really enjoyed was called Passion. It was a lunch cafe where we had a really good tomato soup and uh, cheese croquettes. And so almost like having grilled cheese and tomato soup like we would back home. And it was a rainy day, so it was just like the perfect meal. (laughs) Yeah, and there's beers. Yeah, you list several things that uh, would be interesting to people who are going to be visiting Belgium, um, Ghent, because you, you list your favorite restaurants and places to try things. So that's cool. Yeah. And the hotel that we found there was absolutely amazing. It was a beautiful, beautifully restored 18th century townhouse. And then the host, you know, would cook us breakfast every morning. So the hotel there, I would, I would definitely recommend. It was called Ganda Rooms and Suites. Very good. And I'll put a link in the show notes as well, because okay. I want to make it easy for everybody. Very and then good. Our last, yeah. Our last day... So our longest drive that we had was that last day we were spending, which we drove from Ghent to Reims and spent the day there. It was a Saturday, and Reims is a more popular town. A lot of day trippers from Paris, I think, is probably part of it. Right. It was very crowded. (laughs) Mm. So we actually had booked a hotel that was right in the market square, right there in front of the cathedral. That's a good Um, idea. And so... A little bit of challenge getting to our hotel, being able Ah. to drop off our luggage. So something to be aware of if you're staying in that area. Yeah, because because they restrict traffic in front of the hotel? 
they did. Mm -hmm. They did restrict the traffic. It it was completely shut down because it was part of the Christmas market itself. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we had to find a, a nearby location to, you know, park the car for a few minutes, go get our luggage, you know, carry, you know, carry it through the Christmas market and then go back to the car and go find our permanent parking. Mm -hmm. But it all worked out in the end. Yeah. Was the hotel nice other than that? It was a beautiful hotel. Um, it being right there, it's, it was the only hotel we stayed at that was part of the hotel chain. It's a part of the Marriott brands, Mm. but it's part of their more boutique style hotels. Um, and then we had an actual, one of the rooms we had actually faced the cathedral, which ended up being something that we enjoyed later that evening, being able to sit out on the, the balcony and being able to watch the market below rather than being down in the market with all the people. Right, right. So you could see it from your hotel. That's always nice. <laughs> yeah. But we did go out and explore the market for a little bit, and then we went into the cathedral. So that was one of our main um, reasons for visiting Ronce, was to visit the cathedral there. Mm-hmm. It's the place where 33 of the French kings, I believe, were crowned. Correct. Um, not as much decoration in the front portion of the cathedral is what maybe you're used to seeing in some of the others but as you get into the chapels in the back of the cathedral um, there's some beautiful stained glass back in that area they have a one of the chapels has a beautiful Marc Chagall stained glass window Mm -hmm. and then they have a lot more modern stained glass um, because a lot of their stained glass was destroyed during the war a lot of that cathedral was destroyed during the war yes Yeah, yeah yeah but it's but it is an absolutely beautiful building there was Christmas concert going on while we were there, so there was um, some music inside the cathedral. Nice. Um, it was it was busy, but if you went to the towards the back, most of the people were sitting and watching the concert. Um, we wandered around the whole the whole building and back and through the chapels in the rear, so we were out of all of the busy crowded area, but still got to listen to the music. So, um, a little tip there. Nice, nice. So they did did they charge to get because no. of the concert? Okay. No, they didn't charge. I think it was just more local, you know, maybe mm. local choirs, that kind of thing yeah. that we're singing. Yeah. Yeah. So in France, entrance to the cathedral is always free because the cathedral building is owned by the city. But uh, sometimes when there's an event going on, you have to pay to get into that event. Yeah. And then we did wander through some of the market. You know, that's where we ate dinner that night rather than trying to find a restaurant. And then we did find a beautiful booth that had hand-blown and hand-painted glass ornaments. Um, So that was one of our souvenirs that we brought home with us. Did you make it home Um, in one piece? Mine did. My mom's did not, sadly. (laughs) So pack, you know, make sure you put, you know, bubble wrap or... Like wrap your scarf, something around that. Yeah, and maybe home. bring a kind of a hard box. If you know you're going to yeah. be buying glass ornaments, maybe bring a hard box and then pack the box really well. And hopefully, you know, oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Um, and so then in that, the, Sorry, go ahead. That night they um, actually have a light and sound show on the facade of the Rons Cathedral as well. Ah, similar yes. to what Amion had. And so we were able to actually sit on our terrace at our hotel and enjoy it uh, from our ho- and enjoy it and drink a glass of champagne. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, you didn't go see the champagne houses. On we we didn't because we had, were only there for the one day. Right. Um, and so, but we did stop at one of the shops right there in the main square and bought a bottle and took it up to our hotel room. That's great. So, of all of these Christmas markets. Would you still say the one in Arras was the the one that you enjoyed the most? I would say it was a combination of Arras and probably Ghent. Ah. Those are probably the two that we enjoyed the most. Cool. Very good to know. All right. And then you had a few general hints and suggestions. Let's go through those quickly. Okay. So the first one was our decision to drive was a good one because of the strike. We did run into a couple in Belgium that were heading back into France and they were head been planning to take the train and their train had been canceled yeah so they were taking a bus so we were like oh we don't have to worry about any of this because we have our own car right right yeah and and during this particular strike uh, truckers threatened to block roads but it ended up being very few roads and only for an hour or two 
So yeah. people freaked out and- over this, but... It really wasn't that big of a deal, you know. Yeah, and we patient. didn't see any of that. So yeah, yeah. We were I haven't lucky. seen. Yeah, I haven't seen any of it, and I live here, so you know, it, it. It. I mean, if if you happen to be right where it's happening, it's really annoying. But it's not happening in that many places. Yes, and then the next one was a couple. The next two actually kind of go together a little bit. One is. The sun does go down really early because it's winter. So around 4.30, it starts getting dark. So make sure that you take that in consideration when you're driving around and if you don't want to be driving in the dark yeah. um, to plan your activities, you know, kind of between, say, the 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. time for driving. Yeah. Um, and then um, the other thing is make your drives that you're planning to do shorter. Um, maybe, you know, stay you know, we, we stayed in Amiens and then Lille. We could have gone straight into Belgium, but we knew that there were things we were wanting to do on our way to Lille. And so we kind of used that as a stopgap before going into Belgium. Yeah. So maybe make your drives an hour to an hour and a half in between places. That's very wise. Yeah. Um, and then the next one would be that because the markets do get extremely crowded, especially in the larger cities during the weekends during December, I would say maybe plan other activities on Saturday and Sunday and then do the markets if you can during the week. Right, right. If you can, that's best. Yeah, because French people do go out to those Christmas markets and most of them can only go on Saturday and Sunday. Right. Um, And then some of the smaller towns typically only have a single market. If anybody's used to going into, say, Germany or Austria and some of the other um, countries, some of those towns have like five, six, seven Christmas markets in their towns. Yeah. Um, it's n- not as popular in France, right. um, but the markets are still beautiful and you still get into the Christmas spirit. Um, but just know that a lot of the towns only have a single market. So you can maybe plan to do more than one in a day or, you know, like I said, just space your, your days out so that you have other activities. Excellent. Well, that was really interesting. Thank you so much. And it's good to know that of all of those, you know, Haas and Ghent... Great stops for the Christmas market. That's that's wonderful. Yes. And you wrote very detailed guest notes, which I will put a link to in the show notes. So this is this episode is going to be episode 263, and it's going to come out uh, on December 22nd. And, uh, yeah, and so I hope uh, whoever is going to visit to explore that part of France uh, next <laughs> will uh, we'll learn lots from your, from your observations. Well, I enjoyed it. Thanks, Annie. Thank you very much. And joyeux Noël. I will. Au okay. Au revoir. Thank you, Laurie McCollum, Gail Kenny, Amy, Carol Vogler, and Emily Connor for pledging to support the show on Patreon this week. Patrons enjoy several rewards that you'll find listed at patreon.com forward slash join us. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N forward slash join us, no spaces or dashes. I share exclusive content with my patrons, including help with your French comprehension, stories about France, photos, and membership into a secret Facebook group. And of course, patrons can message me directly through Patreon and these messages always get top priority. Thank you also Susan Boyd and Madeleine Santiago for your one-time donation. Susan is has donated several times before. I really appreciate your patronage. They did that using the green button that says tip your guide on joinusinfrance.com. And if you're not sure your itinerary for France is as good as it needs to be, let me review it for you. For a $50 donation, you get a full review. We go through the whole thing on the phone and I send you my recommendations in writing. Email Annie at joinusinfrance.com to set that up and let me know that you want an itinerary review in the subject line. And if you'd like to support the show without spending a penny you wouldn't have otherwise, before you go shopping on Amazon or before you go buying your hotel rooms, go to the bottom of any page on joinusinfrance.com and click on either the Amazon ad or the booking.com ad. Because you came to those sites through Join Us in France, I get a small commission and it doesn't cost you a 
penny more, and this is enough to pay for the hosting and uh, the things, you know, hosting a sh podcast isn't free. So it pays for that sort of thing, and it's uh, very much appreciated. For my personal update this week, well, it's a few days before Christmas, so it's been very busy. I'm sure you've been very busy too. To update you on my German branch mulching machine problem that I mentioned last week, the broken machine has been returned and uh, the return has been credited to my credit card. So all is well. I went and bought another branch mulching machine locally and that experience went much better. It took three hours, but but I mulched all my branches with the new machine and I also mulched all the leaves with the mower. And so now life is as it should be. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I get a little obsessed with projects like that. It would have really bugged me to have my backyard look messy much longer. And I'll be producing two episodes in a row the, today and tomorrow so, so I can take them some time off uh, between Christmas and New Year. So there won't be any thank yous in the next episode, but uh, you know me, I really uh, appreciate all of your support anyway. It'll be an interesting episode about planning a trip to France with a large group, which is, it can be complicated. And we're going to Collioure as a family for a few days. We're even taking the dogs. <laughs> Let's hope for not too much wind as we're mostly going so we can, you know, take some nice walks along the beach and the, and the scenic um, places that they have around there. And uh, I have a nice change of scenery. I'll try my hand at bird photography while in Collioure as well because I know they have some interesting birds down there. I found out trying to get photos of birds coming to my backyard feeder that birds are much faster than basketball players. So it's a challenge to get a sharp bird photo, but like anything else, it's practice, practice, practice. So I'll do that. And if I get some good ones, I'll post them on uh, the Facebook uh, group and possibly on um, Instagram too. While well, in Collioure, we'll also take a quick trip into Spain because I have a few favorite Spanish products that I want to buy that I can't find in France. I love this one particular brand of olives and also a tomato sauce. <laughs> Most French people go to Spain and they buy cigarettes and booze because the local taxes are lower over there. I might get some booze, but no cigarettes. Thank you very much. Anyway, it'll be fun. I hope you have fun things planned for your uh, year and celebrations as well. If you want to recommend the podcast to someone who already listens to podcasts, tell them they'll find Join Us in France anywhere they get their podcast. If they listen to music but not podcasts on their phones, well, tell them there's podcasts on Spotify and Pandora too. All they have to do is search for Join Us in France. And if they don't normally listen to anything on their phones, send them to joinusinfrance.com. And thank you for listening and spreading the word. You guys are the best ambassadors. Send questions or feedback to Annie at joinusinfrance.com. Have a great week of trip planning. Happy holidays to all of you. Au revoir. The Join Us in France Travel Podcast is written and produced by Annie Sargent and copyright 2019 by Addicted to France. It is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. <laughs>